Yeah, this morning's sermon, um, I might have to preach it next week too, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> because it... Uh, it be nice to Lisa, bro. Yeah, it really, it, I mean, it really calls us out. So, and uh, we're in this, we're in this series looking at uh, um, what Jesus has said, what was recorded him saying. And um, so last week we looked at um, Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 36, and it's how many, how many credits do I need? And um, it's, what is it, what does it credit you for doing good to somebody you already like, basically? And that was last week's. This week it's Luke chapter 6, 37 through 45, and it's often um, uh, a text that is taking, taken out of context. Uh, it's used wrong, and um, we're going we're gonna to look at it in the light of, of how Jesus meant it. He is uh, giving the Sermon on the Mount. He's up on the hilltop. It's a, a flat part of the hill, and he's speaking to his disciples, but yet there are hundreds and hundreds around him. Um, that are listening, so he's also speaking to them, whoever will listen. Um, that was the beginning of last week's sermon. Uh, but to you who are willing to listen, say, I say, love your enemies. And he said that a couple of different times in that passage, to love your enemies. So, um, I don't... Uh, I don't script any, any of these sermons, so I don't, I don't know what God has, has, has for me or has for you. It's kind of interesting that we, you know, we're in this journey together, and we just follow through, and what you get out of it is what you need, and what I get out of it is what I need. And most of the time, I'm getting beat up pretty good because that's just the way God does. He judges the preacher more than he judges everybody else. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this and, and see what's up for today. I'm reading out of the New Living Testament. It says, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn others, or it will all come back against you. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and pouring into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can, can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Students are not greater than their teachers, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. And why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of the speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own? Hypocrite. First get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much for this 4th of July weekend. We thank you that... Uh, um, our friends and, and family of cross culture are, are away and renewing their, uh, their batteries, recharging their batteries. Lord, I just pray you watch over them. I pray that each and every one that you would keep them safe, that they would have a great time, and that they come back to us um, uh, full of vigor and just, and just um, have, a, have all the stress of the world off, off their shoulders because they got away for a while. We know how important vacations are. And sometimes they can be stressful too. So we pray that, uh, that you'll relieve the stress from those who are on vacation. We thank you for those that are visiting um, our church today from other places. Lord, we pray that you uh, pour your, uh, your grace out on them. And there are other, other folks from all over that come to Lexington and Peck and, and Sandusky and, and they visit our churches on this weekend, and we just pray that, uh, that they'll be renewed um, by your Spirit. Now, Father, we ask that you would open up this, uh, this word to us, and uh, that we'll learn something from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
So this passage, it says, don't judge others and you will not be judged. This is a passage that gets pulled out of context all the time. Well, you can't judge me. You can't judge me. The Bible says don't judge. How many of you have heard that over and over and over again? The Bible says don't judge. Is that what this is that what it says? Actually, it says do not judge others. And you will not be judged. Do not judge others. Or you'll be judged in the same way that you judge others. So, yes, we can judge. But expect it to come back full force to you in the same way that you judge somebody else. So, you judge somebody at how they drive. Right? Tiffany went to the fireworks (laughs) in Lexington. And the drivers were absolutely nuts. And I'm glad I was not in the vehicle with her because Charlene was going crazy and telling her how to drive. And um, I'm sure there was language that a preacher should not hear going on. And not, maybe not from them, but from the people that were driving other cars. And she gave me this example. It's a great, it's a great example. This, this guy's in, the, he's in his car and they're trying to cross the street and not in the crosswalk, so they're jaywalking. So if there's any police here, you can give her a ticket now or online, just send it to her. It's uh, at gmail.com and she'll gladly pay that fine for you. But uh, she was crossing the street and this guy's in the car and starts cussing her out. What? Both Charlene and Tiffany. What you, there's crosswalk back there. You need, to, you need to use the crosswalk. You can't just cross here anywhere you want. And uh, so this other guy uh, that they, they didn't know came up and started cussing him out and said, hey, there's 15,000 people in town. Look at the crosswalks. You can't even get by them. Just leave them alone. And then turns and looks at him and says, hey, I got your back. Perfect example. You know what? That guy was judging Tiffany and, and Charlene and Jamie was there and some other kids. The guy in the car is judging them. And you know what? He got judged in the same way, didn't he? So, so this other guy walked. I, and the language was just, it is what it is. People talk like that stuff all the time. But judge and uh, don't judge, and you will not be judged. So if the guy were just nice about it, if he just shut his mouth, it would have been fine. The, uh, it's, it, this actually means don't pick on people. Don't jump on their failures or criticize their faults. That's what this is actually saying. Don't judge. Don't pick on people. Pretty simple, isn't it? That's modern day language. We understand that. And this guy was picking on them. Don't jump on their failures. Were they supposed to be crossing there? Heck no. We have crosswalks for a reason. They're for your safety. So so Tiffany doesn't end up as flat Tiffany. And then we can put her in an envelope and ship her all over the United States and all over the world. Like flat Stanley, right? That's why we have crosswalks. And that's why those little flashing things are up there. And, you know, us, us people around here in the small town, though, we don't, pay, we don't pay a lot of attention to that, do we? And so when Tiffany and I, it, we, we, we chum around a lot. When we get to a city, we, don't, we still don't pay attention to the crosswalks. <laughs> she, she knows that's true. So, so we look, and we start crossing, and Tiffany's like, they're going to hit us. And I'm like... Um, have you seen me lately? They're going to ruin their car if they hit me. Let's just keep walking. It's going to be fine. So we shouldn't, we shouldn't jump on other people's failures. We shouldn't criticize their faults. Unless, of course, we want the same treatment. So do you like to be picked on? Do you like people to point out your faults, 
you do this wrong, you do that wrong. Well, if you don't like it, then why do it to people? The Scripture says you're going to get back what you put out. So don't pick on folks. Don't criticize them. Don't condemn those who are down. See, that kind of that hardness, when you pick on somebody that's down, that kind of hardness, that'll boomerang back on you real fast. How many of you ever played with the boomerang? Char's like, yeah, I played with the boomerang. Well, can I ask a quick question? I guess you can. How many ever done it and it worked? That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> right. How many have ever played with a boomerang and it worked? Uh, it works fine for me. So, <laughs> so this, I mean, this type, this type of thing boomerangs on you, and what, the, what that means is it's, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt. Now, I, I get what John's saying. A boomerang, you're supposed to throw it, and it comes back at you, and you catch it, right? The, so he is, he's basically making my point for me, because... How often do you throw a boomerang and it comes back and you catch it? That would be working out good for you. See, we're talking about this here where you throw the boomerang and it comes back and it hits you upside the head. Or it hits you someplace else. Or it tags you where it might hurt quite badly. This is how the boomerang works. And this is what happens when we treat other people wrong. It almost always comes back on us. It almost always uh, makes life more difficult. See, because if you're easy on people, you find that life is easier on you. We wonder why we struggle so much, why we go through all these challenges, all the, all the, the, the crap of life. Well, you know what? How are you treating other people? If you're not treating other people good, if you're, if you're disrupting life and walking through places that's not the correct crosswalk, you're making life difficult on other people. And so, it, therefore, it's going to be difficult on you. Sorry, Tiffany. Do right, and right comes back. Do good, and good comes back. This is what Jesus is teaching to the apostles and the surrounding people that are, that, are, that, are, that are listening. I'm sure there's lots of folks that aren't listening. I'm sure there's lots of folks that are just sitting there waiting for the free meal because Jesus likes to do those kinds of miracles, doesn't he? You know, maybe they wanted some fish and some bread. Who knows? Now, be easy on people and you'll find, it, find that life is easier on you. Give away your life... And you'll find life is given back. So do things for others, and God will bless you. He will bless you abundantly. And so you'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving, not getting is the way. Generosity begets generosity. So if you treat others good, good comes back. If you treat others bad, bad comes back. The whole, the whole saying goes, karma sucks, doesn't it? Because, because that's just the way it is. That's the way life is the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. So the amount of crap that you give will determine the amount of crap that you get back. And the amount of good that you give will determine the amount of good 
that you get back. These aren't my words. This is what Jesus is teaching. And if Jesus is teaching, we ought to listen, shouldn't we? It goes on and says, Jesus gave the following illustration. Can, a blind, can one blind person lead another? Won't they both fall into a ditch? This is like two people trying to do something they don't know how to do. This is, if we, if we look at trying to work on um, a stove or an oven or, a, or a, a, uh, a dryer, we just bought a new dryer. Um, and it had to be changed over from natural gas to propane. I don't know why you can't just buy a propane dryer. Because, you know, around here, almost everybody has propane that's in the country. You know, if you're in the city, yeah, you might have natural gas. Or in the town, they might have natural gas. But a lot of us live in the country. So why can't we just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and pick up a propane dryer? No, it doesn't work like that. And you can't just take off one panel in the back and screw the new orifice in. That's not the way it works. You have to completely tear the whole thing apart. I mean completely tear it apart. Take the top off, take all the screws out, take the back off, take, take the front off. All the controls have to come out. And you know what? If you don't know what you're doing, you can be lost. And if you don't have a YouTube video to watch, it's horrible. So I hand Tiffany the instructions and I say, hey, Tiffany, go ahead and read this. And this is like the blind leading the blind and we're going to fall into a ditch. We're going to fall into a lot of trouble because you know what? Tiffany sometimes forgets how to read. And she says, the picture shows this. Yeah, the picture shows that, but that picture was drawn by a Chinese guy that doesn't know how to draw. You do realize that he stands on his head and drinks coffee while he's drawing the pictures. They're not right. They're not accurate. Yeah, but the picture shows this. This bolt has to come out. So I take that bolt out, and the whole stinking dryer falls to pieces on me. The drum's laying there. The belt's over here. I mean, it's just a complete disaster because she didn't read the little line underneath the picture that says, do not remove this bolt. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, blind leading the blind. They fall into a ditch. They fall into all kinds of trouble. And it's kind of like the, also the, the, the student trying to be smarter than the teacher. This doesn't work very well either. Lots of times that I'm working on a computer. You guys know that it, modify and build and fix computers. Well, there's been times where Daniel thinks he knows more because I've showed him a few tricks. And so he'll take the computer and he'll start in on the software and start changing stuff on the software because, oh, this is going to run better. And then... 12, 15, 18 hours later, after he's just messed the whole thing up, he'll bring the thing to me and ask me how to fix it. Yeah. And so you know what I do? I ask him, why didn't you just bring it to me earlier? Why didn't you ask well, because I thought I knew how to do it. I thought you taught me everything there is to know about it. And Jesus is teaching the apostles about life right now, isn't he? Because for fear that they'll go off and that they'll do their own thing, and then they'll fall into a ditch and they'll get in all kinds of trouble. So he's like, look, listen to the teacher. The student is not going to be better than the teacher. The student is going to be equal to the teacher. And someday, someday once you learn enough... And yes, we're not going to be equal to God, but we're going to know what God knows when we get to heaven. And I am so much looking forward to that because then we don't have to pull out the wrong bolts. And we don't move the paint sprayer without knowing how to move the paint sprayer. So I've got a $600 paint sprayer. Used it for a, used it for a lot of years. It has a wand. It's one of those commercial ones. Goes into a five-gallon bucket. It has a wand on it, okay? 
the wand screws into the bottom. And, and then the bucket hooks on this hook. So if you want to move it, you just grab it and kick it back on the wheels and move it. But if you don't, if you try to hold the bucket and wheel the whole thing all at the same time, it breaks the wand. And since the thing is old enough, I, you can't buy parts for it anymore because it's too old, so you've got to go buy a whole new paint sprayer. Well, I, I heard, I, we're finishing up painting this garage, and I hear the thing going, and I'm, I'm washing out some paintbrushes in the front of the house, and I'm hearing, I'm like, I know what she did. I know exactly what she did. I walked back there. And sure enough, the hose is all, the nozzle on it's all kinked and broken, the, and the threads are all messed up on it, and there, there's, there's really no way to get a good seal now. And I asked her, I said, Tiffany, why didn't you ask how to move this? Oh, I thought I knew. I thought I knew. And, you know, this is the, this is the same thing that, that Jesus says to, to us. When we try to step out and do something without asking him how first. Do you ever stop and take a minute to ask Jesus how to do something? That's probably a foreign idea, isn't it? Okay, God, how do I, how do I go about this? What is the best way to get home or back to my car from the fireworks in Lexington? What is the best way? What is the best way to move the paint sprayer? What is the best way to hang a garage door? It took us nine hours to hang a garage door yesterday instead of the normal three and a half to four hours. And yes, it was a whole instruction thing too. I gave her the instructions and she's looking at the pictures. Tiffany, will you please read? Granted, I forgot the lights, so we couldn't really see in the garage. It was dark in there, and that was, that was, a, that was a, a whole challenge. Students are not greater than their teachers, but the student who's, who is fully trained will become like the teacher. And I so want to be like Jesus. He is kind and gentle, isn't he? He's taking his precious time to sit on the side of a mountain and teach. And you notice he's not being nasty. He's not being cruel. He's just being honest. He's like, look, if you want an easy life, this is what you do. Don't judge others. Don't pick on people. Don't jump on their failures. Don't criticize all that stuff's going to come back and bite you in the backside. Live right. And then this whole speck in, a, in somebody's eye. I, I want I to bring this to I want to bring this to today. Because it, yes, we can get a speck in our eye, but we don't get logs in our eyes. So, I mean, that, that may have been a, a, an illustration that Jesus used for that, for that time. Let's, let's look at today. It's easy to see a smudge on somebody's face, isn't it? Easy to see a smudge on somebody's face. It's real difficult to see the scowl on ours. Ooh. How many of you walk around with a resting bitch face? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think I can say that because we're modern time, right? Because everybody knows what that is. You walk around with this look on your face like somebody peeing your oatmeal or somebody ruined your everything. And all the time you look like that. But then you want to go and correct somebody else. You want to make somebody else smile. You want to make somebody else feel good. How can you make somebody else feel good when that's the look on your face? We've seen these people. Maybe some of you. Yes, definitely some of you. When you have that look on your face, I'm like, uh, I think I got something to do, and I'm, I'm going someplace else. I have, <laughs> I have, seen, I have seen mom. 
It's time to pick on Pam just a little bit. I, I, have, I have seen mom with this look on her face like she is going to kill anything that gets in her way. And when she gets like that, I know that if I have a problem, I'm shifting it off to her. Because she's going to call whoever's messed me up, whoever is causing the problem, and she's going to tear into them insurance companies. Oh, my goodness. If you're an insurance company out there, you need to watch out for mom. When she gets that look on her face, she's coming after you, and you better watch out. But then, but then when she's got that look on her face and she goes after somebody, how do you turn on the smile and say, God bless you? I hope you have a great, thank you so much, I hope you have a great day. So you're on the phone and you're blessing them out and you're using all kinds of language that it's not swear language, but it, it could be translated swear language. And then once you're satisfied with the outcome, you're like, thank you so much. I appreciate you. You've done a wonderful job. Can I do anything more for you? No, that was just perfect. I appreciate it. God bless you. I hope. Whoa. <laughs> I know, but you can't turn it around. You can't turn it around and take and take the smudge off their face when you are already there. When you're no, it just doesn't work like that. I, I'm sorry, John. I, I just took all the air out of your balloon. I know. I this is hard for me to take this week. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I I believe it. It's pro it's hard for me to take any week. It's hard for me to take any week. I mean, it really is. It's easy to see the smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly sneer on your own. Do you have the nerve to say, hey, let me wash that smudge off your face when your own face is distorted with contempt? It's this... I know better than you mentality and playing a holier than thou part instead of just living your own part. We often think, I know better than you. And as Christians, we often <laughs> want to throw out the, I know better than you and I'm holier than thou. And you know what? It's like oil and water, they don't mix. They don't mix at all. So wipe the ugly sneer off your own face first. Check yourself first before you go to deal with somebody else. And if you do, your gift will return full. Your gift will return to you in full. The gift that God will give you, if you correct these things in your life, the gift that God will give you is more than you can handle. The Bible says, press down, shaken together, and make room for more running over and pouring into your laps. This is like taking a jar and putting some big rocks in it and saying, okay, the jar is full. Oh no, God says, that jar is not full. I'm not done filling you up yet. Because you're living right, I'm going to fill it up a little bit more. So he takes some pebbles and he pours into the jar. And you see the jar is full, right? He's like, oh no, I'm not done filling you up yet. And then he takes some sand and he pours in there. And you're like, okay, the jar is full, right? And God says, no, because you're doing good, because you're living right, I'm going to pour some water in that jar now. And you're like, holy crap, I thought it was full with just two rocks. God, I thought I had enough. I thought you were filling me up. But now, all of this, all of the everything that you're pouring out into my life is running over into my lap. Your cup runneth over, so the scripture says. God gives us everything we need until our cups run over. And when our cups run over, we pour more into other folks. Cross the street in the right spot. That's doing good. That's doing right. Ask before you go and do something stupid. If you have a teacher around you or if somebody knows better than you, ask if nobody's around, ask Jesus, hey, Jesus, how do I do this? Go ask the Google. 
Read the instructions. Don't just look at the pictures. Those are the good things we do in life. Those things make life easier and God fills us up. We need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need God to help us live life right. So you know what? Go home, look in the mirror. If you've got that RBF going on, you need to, you need to talk to God. You need to pray about that. Because it takes more muscles to frown than it does to smile. And I've had people ask me, and I've, I have creeped people out because I smile so much. I, I, can be, I can be mean, I can be nasty, but most of the time, I'm just smiling to smile. It's fun. And I like to creep people out. That's kind of fun. Tiff Never mind, Tiffany. Smile, <laughs> smile when you're being mean and nasty. Too. Exactly, yes. People get really ticked. Yes, yes, yes. So if Tiffany and Charlene would have been, God bless you, thank you so much for letting us cross in front of you, the guy would have been even madder, right? I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Yeah, of course, that could be an example of the smudge on somebody's face when your face is already nasty. You know, because lots of times the I'll pray for you turns out to be condescending. And it's the tone and everything like that. So, the amount you give will determine the amount you get back. The amount of bad you give will determine the amount of bad you get back. The amount of good you give will determine the amount of good you get back. <sighs> Tough lesson today for all of us. Because we all need to keep in check, don't we? We need to make sure that we're right. Let's go ahead and pray. Father God, thank you so much for your scripture. Lord, thanks for beating us up today. Sometimes we need that. But Lord, when you beat us up, you also fill our cup. And we ask that our cup will run over. Lord, that we can pour that into somebody else. Father, we thank you for the beautiful day. We thank you for the beautiful fourth that we had on Thursday. And uh, we just pray that you continue to work in our lives. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.